everyone, my name is Allie Buckman with the Potomac Bead Company and today I'm going to show you a really simple summery bracelet using leather and cup chain. It can be any really size that you're working with. You want your leather to at least be one and a half millimeters thick. And the leather that I'll be working with is actually two millimeters thick. It's a Greek leather. This shows here a double stranded one. I'm going to be doing a single strand in the video. So you're going to want that leather, which is um, again about two millimeters, 1.5 to three really works. I have two and I'm using the Greek leather and a brown. The Greek leather has a nice, easy flexibility to it. So that's why I chose to use that. As far as how much leather you're going to need, you're going to need the length of your wrist. So when you're working with it, you want it to go around your wrist and it's going to be doubled because we're going to have two strands of leather going behind it. So you want to have a ruler sitting close by and you want to know exactly your wrist size. I like to make things just a little bit bigger. So you need to have enough leather that you can fold over and it goes around your wrist plus an additional four inches of leather, two inches for either side. So I have about a six and a half inch wrist. I like to wear bracelets um, about six and a quarter. I'll go with seven inches for this one. And then I'm gonna need an additional four. So I have that seven plus seven because you're doubling it. So that's gonna be 14 inches plus an additional four would be 18 inches of leather. It's gonna be pretty much a standard inch bracelet. You'll have some extra at the end. Some people will choose to leave that on as fringe. Some people will cut it off. So that's the leather that I'm using. Again, the Greek leather in the brown color. I'm going to be closing off with a button, and this is a pewter button. We sell them in two packs, and this one is the flower button. It has a really pretty little kind of flourish flower to it. Cup chain wise, I'm using the SS14, and this is the opal color and has a silver setting to it. It's a silver plating, and because I am making it for my wrist, I have it a little bit smaller than would be that seven inch wrist. So again, I'm going about six and three quarters. So I have right here about six inches of my chain. You're gonna use about an inch less of chain than your bracelet length will actually be because we're gonna need that loop in order to make and add your clasp. As far as our wrapping cord, that's really up to you. You can use embroidery floss, you can use silk cording, which is what I'll be using. You can use a thinner leather um, and get that same look and that same design. So what you want to actually use on it is up to you. Again, the coloring on the cup buttons, you're gonna see just a tiny bit of the leather going through it. This colored one here is an SS12 for the cup chain measurement and the coral color. So you can really kind of play on your different colors. I prefer to use the silk cording. This is Griffin Silk, which already comes with a needle attached. For many projects, you wanna make sure that that needle stays attached. For this product project, it actually doesn't matter. So if you do have some thread sitting around, and this is the beige color of the Griffin in the size six. So if you do have it sitting around and a needle fell off, that's a great opportunity to use it. You can also use sewing thread. So it requires a very little amount of materials other than your leather and your cup chain. I'm going to go ahead and get ready to start the bracelet and I have the ruler sitting by material wise and I'm working on a bead mat. Also I want to make sure that I have near me some glue. I'm using super new glue and you want to have a either cutters or a sharp scissors. I have a flush cutters here or a nipper or you can do your slipping uh, the slip and snip plier, or cutters. So it doesn't really matter what you have, but something to cut your leather and to actually cut your thread as well that you're working with. So to get started, I've taken my whole cording off my silk here. So, or my whole silk off my card. Usually when I'm doing knotting or going to be using it, I'm going to start here at the needle end. So I just pulled all that silk through. This project, I'm actually gonna start at the opposite end. That way I can reserve this needle end for a different project if I would like. So I'm gonna go to the absolute other end of my thread, grabbing here at the end of the thread. I'm going to tie a little knot in the end of the thread. That's just gonna keep it from fraying and give a nice tight pull. I'm going to sit this kind of to the side right now and I'm gonna pick up my leather. So you have two choices when it comes to the clasp. You can either make 
your loop so that the button goes on and then it has a little fringe here at the end that hangs out of it or you can put the button on at the end and make your loop nice and clean. So I prefer to have a nice clean loop. I know one of the other girls here likes to have the little fringe be showing at the end and prefers to tie her loop here at the end, but I'm gonna start in the style that I like with the button at the loop. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take my button out. This is a shank button and it has that shank going right through the back so all I have to do is slide my leather on. If you have a button that has a small end that doesn't, like if you're using a gemstone button like I have here on this bracelet, or if you're using a cup button, sometimes it won't slide on. In that case, what you're going to want to do is definitely do your loop first. And you're going to always make your loop closure. Um, you're going to make your loop closure actually big enough to fit the end of that button. So what I'm doing here is I have the button on, and again, I'm gonna do a clean loop. So all I'm gonna do right now is just test about how big I need that loop to be. And you can eyeball it, you can take your ruler if you want and do an actual measurement. I'm gonna slide that button off and keep that for the end. So now that I have about the size that I want it to be, and I know that loop, I'm going to tie a knot. So I'm just gonna tie an overhand knot using a double knot, pulling that thread or pulling that leather through the knot. I'm gonna double check, make sure that that button goes on. And since I'm doing that clean loop, it's gonna be on the other side. Now that my loop is made, I'm going to pick back up my silk cording and I'm actually going to tie that on. Again, I'm going to the end of the silk here where I've tied the knot. I'm going to go below the knot that I've created and I'm just going to literally tie that silk cording onto my leather. You notice I'm not close to the knot. I'm not gonna really worry about that until they get going. I'm gonna do another knot. Pull nice and tight and then I'm gonna slide that up on my leather. Once you have that up next to your knot, and I pulled mine nice and tight, <laughs> once you have that next to your knot, right there, we're gonna eventually come back and use our glue and glue that knot a little bit. I'm just gonna push the tail off to the side, and I'm gonna take my longer piece of cording, which unfortunately, because it's so long, the end of it will actually be off camera a lot, and I'm going to, having that tucked back, wrap around three times and that's going to create the base that I'm going to use to attach my cup chain. So the leather is doubled and our cup chain is just going to sit right on top of that leather. I'm going to slide the first little cup of cup chain up to into place which is going to go pretty much right over top of those three little loops. Force the knot over to the side and push the cup down next to the end of the cording here. The cup chain is gonna move in and out and kind of expand and contract when we're working on it. We're gonna be actually extending it full as we're working on it. You can choose to do multiple wraps or you can choose to do one, that's up to you. I'm gonna show a two wrap method. So I have in my left hand my cording and my cup chain. That's what I find easiest and fastest to hold. In the right hand, I'm gonna take two wraps around in between the cup chain. When I wrap, I wanna make sure that I'm wrapping down towards my hand, and I have those two wraps going over in between that little bridge connecting each of the, chain, the crystals. I'm going to take that cording now in on the back and kind of zigzag it down, go to the next cup, push that tail out of the way there, go to the next cup here, and wrap once around, and then twice around. So I'm gonna do two wraps between each. That's gonna hold it in. It's a really soft, that beige color is really soft and almost has a pinky tone to it. I'm gonna move down the cup chain again, making sure that your leather's staying nice and flat the whole time. Wrap twice, once, and then twice around, 
and then create that zigzag again on the back. So on the back, you'll have this pattern. I'm gonna continue doing this the whole length of my bracelet, wrapping two times in between each cup chain. So I've gotten to the end of my cup chain, wrapping it all in place, and this bracelet actually is very quick. Off camera, I can do it very, very quickly, kind of going back and forth. You can start from whichever end you feel comfortable with. I usually wrap in this direction because my long cording is at the end. When I get to the end here, what I'm gonna do is take my silk cording and I'm going to wrap it around three times like I did at the start. And I'm gonna do this pretty tight, but I wanna make sure always to keep that leather laying nice. Once I have those three wraps, I'm going to do a knot where I make my loop and then I'm gonna take my cording and pull it through that loop to knot it onto my leather. You can see I still have plenty of cording, plenty of silk to do another one. You can also string beads on wire, just leaving some extra space in between on a beading wire and um, like a beading cable. And you could do this technique as well. So you could do it with pearls, you can do it with all different stuff, but it looks really pretty with the cup chain. So once I have that, it mimics the other end here while I have that tail already on. And what I'm gonna do then is go in here and add my button. So again, I could have added my button here, but I like that clean loop. If I would have added my button here, all I'm gonna do at this end is tie a knot and then knot again up here, leaving enough space between the knots in order to put that button that was on the other end through. What I'm gonna do is actually hide my button and my example piece here, I'll show you. I have a different version also. These are some of our pewter spacer beads. And the pewter spacer beads have a large hole, so they worked just to put on here and then not after them. It's actually two double stacked. I'm gonna be using again the button, but you can see the knot kinda of happens and the loop on this end is gonna to attach to it. I'm gonna take my cup button, or I'm sorry, my pewter button, and I'm gonna slide it onto my clasp here, or onto my leather. So in the habit of saying cup buttons. And what I'm gonna do then is tie my two pieces of leather, so it's on one end of the leather. I'm just gonna do a simple tie, tying the leather ends together. That's gonna to end the knot right at the back there. And I wanna make sure when I flip it over that that button's gonna sit right on top and I usually don't like it covering the cup chain, so I'm just kind of sliding it down a little bit, but I want it right at the end of the cup chain. I have one knot here, and I went right to left. Now I'm gonna go left to right. Tie that square knot right in there. And then all I'm gonna do is trim down my leather. Again, some people wanna keep it as fringe. I'm gonna trim it down, and I'm gonna trim it down right so it ends in the back here. Grab that super new glue and I'm gonna glue right inside the knot. So I dropped it kind of that glue right inside there. You can see it glazed look. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other end. So I'm kind of hiding the glue behind the leather. At the same time, I'm gonna pick up that cording, which the knot is to the back, and glue the silk down right where my knots are. You can push the first one to the back, glue that down as well. Let that dry. And as it dries, you can, if you want, cut down silk on that side and cut down the silk on this side. If you have a thread burner, you can also burn down a little tiny bit. You wanna make sure if you're using your thread burner that you don't burn and have too much left over because you actually will get a black burn on the silk cording, so you'll see the black. I prefer to use the glue and then trim it down as it gets hard. But that's it. I still have tons of my silk cording left, so you have enough to do a whole nother bracelet. You can do a double wrap bracelet like this one that you can wrap twice around your wrist. It does cross over a little bit. Play up and have fun with the colors and design and create. This one here with the opal cup chain is really soft. Um, you could kind of wear it with anything. I have a bright pink on as well as some yellow, so you can change it up, wear it with the different colors with that opal cup chain. Now that it is dry, you just slide that loop there through your button and your project is finished. And that's it. It's a very, very simple 
leather and cup chain bracelet using that wrapping technique. Again, you can use lots of different materials to do the wrap. Again, I prefer the silk. This is a size six, a size eight, or 10 also works well. Four, if you're doing a four or a three, you may wanna wrap three times around just because you tend to lose the color in between the cups when you're working on it. So again, all you need is some glue and a wire cutters and just those couple simple things to make this fun summery leather wrap bracelet. If you get a chance, you can check out the rest of our YouTube videos which show cool techniques like this as well as project ideas and product information about all the different things that we carry. You can also visit us at PotomacBeads.com, check out our locations page online and stop by one of your Potomac Bead Company stores that's closest to you. If you're traveling, there may even be one in your area as well, so check that out. And we'd have all the materials there that you need to do this cup chain bracelet. You can also subscribe to the YouTube channel and you'll get regular updates on all of these things. And on our Facebook page, if you check us out there, you can actually post pictures of the different projects, show us what you've made and interact with us, interact with us there. Um, if you do need materials and you don't have them, there's a show more button underneath this video that you can link to all the different products that we can sell you online. Thanks a lot for watching and happy beating everyone. Thank you.